In this exercise, we're going to learn how to get started with Vapor by building our first Vapor application. We will start by installing the Vapor toolbox and then use it to create a new project from the Vapor template, which we can build and run. Finally, we will build upon our application to show you how to do some cool stuff with Roots. A lot of Vapor and server-side Swift development is done via the terminal application, so let's go ahead and open it up. If you've never used it before, don't worry. It can be found in Applications Utilities Terminal. To get started, we will want to install the Vapor toolbox. This is a small application that gives us access to a load of common commands that we will use, helps us create our projects, and can also be used for deploying our applications when we're ready. The first thing we want to do is to make sure that Vapor will work on our systems. Vapor provides a handy script to help us check this. So in terminal, type This command can also be found in the Vapor documentation. The script will make sure that we have Xcode installed correctly and have the right version of Swift installed. Once we've checked we are good to go, we can install the toolbox. The Vapor toolbox can be installed using the Homebrew Package Manager, which is similar to something like Yum or Apt on Linux. If you haven't got Homebrew in installed, just go to brew.sh in your browser and run the installation command here. This will install the Vapor Toolbox from the Vapor repository. If you already have the Toolbox installed, you can make sure you have the latest one installed with brew upgrade vapor slash tap slash vapor. Now we have the Toolbox installed, we can create our first project. I'm going to create a new directory in my home directory, which is the directory that Terminal will open up in, with the make directory or mkdir command. You can name this whatever you like, I'll just name it vapor. Then, you can use the change directory command to navigate into our newly created directory, so for me, this will be CD Vapor. To create a new project, we can use the Vapor new command. This will create a new project using one of the templates that Vapor provides, or you can even use your own template if you want. We will just stick with the default for now, however. We'll name our first project Hello Vapor. Since Vapor 3 is in beta, I can use the beta branch of the template to get the Vapor 3 version. So to create our new Vapor app, I'll type Note that Vapor requires Swift 4.1. The easiest way to install Swift 4.1 for use with Xcode is to go to swift.org in your browser Go to the download section and then download the Swift 4.1 development snapshot. Once this is downloaded, you can install and run the package. When the installation is finished, you can select the toolchain in Xcode by clicking Xcode, Toolchains, and selecting the latest 4.1 snapshot. This clones the template into a new Git repository in our directory with everything that we need to get started. If we navigate into our new application folder with, we can open it up in Fidener using the open command with open dot. Inside our directory, you'll see a number of files and folders, but the ones we're interested in to start with are the sources directory and the package.swift file. All Vapor applications are built using the Swift Package Manager, which is a dependency management system similar to CocoaPods. Our package.swift file is what is known as our manifest, and it defines all of our targets in our application and what dependencies that each target needs. All of our source code lives in our sources directory, in a directory for each module. The default template contains two modules, app and run. These are separate to allow us to test our application easily, and generally we don't want to change the main.swift file in run. All of our code will live in app. One of the biggest benefits about developing a new server-side Swift application is that we get to do most of our development inside Xcode. However, with the Swift Package Manager, the concept of an Xcode project is very different to iOS development. In SPM land, Xcode projects are discardable and temporary. They don't get checked into source control, and you will get used to regenerating them often. Using the toolbox, we can easily generate our projects. So head back to Terminal and type Vapor Xcode. This can take a little bit of time the first time you run it, as it needs to clone all of the dependencies. But when it is done, press Y and enter when prompted.
This will open up Xcode with our project. If you open up sources app roots.swift, you can see we have a predefined hello route. So let's try it out. Select the run target and the my Mac deployment and then the play button. When that's built, we may get asked to allow our app to accept connections by the firewall. So click accept if that pops up. If we open our browser and go to localhost colon 8080 slash hello, we'll see our response. It's really easy to add routes in Vapor. If we want to add a route that is a hello slash vapor that returns hello vapor, we can go into our roots.swift file and add a new function call inside our boot function. In vapor, different path components, which are the bits between slashes in a web address, can be addressed as different parameters. So we can do a router.get and then pass it our two parameters, hello and vapor. This function takes a closure as the final parameter, which passes in a request object, but we can ignore that for now. We can simply return our string, hello vapor. If we build and run our application again with the command r, and then in our browser go to localhost colon 8080 slash hello slash vapor, we will see our new route. It can also be useful to use a generic type for a parameter instead of a concrete string. For instance, if we want to say hello to anyone who visits our app, adding every name in the world would be quite impractical. It would be much easier to be a bit more generic. Thankfully, Vapor makes this really easy as well. Head back to Xcode, and we're going to add a new route that will say hello to whoever visits. So let's say I wanted to visit the app. For instance, I would go to localhost colon 8080 slash hello slash Tim, and it would say hello Tim back to me. So to do this, we can add a new function call to router.get, and this time we'll pass in hello as the first parameter, and then a generic string parameter as the second. In Vapor, we can do this simply by doing string.parameter. Then inside our closure, we can pull out this parameter with. Once we have the name, we can return the correct string with. Finally, we need to give the compiler a bit of help with the return type of our closure as it can get a bit confused. So just set it to return a string. If we build and run again, this time in our browser, we can go to hello slash anything and it will say hello to us. So if I visit hello slash Tim, it will say hello Tim. You can try this with your name too.